Hello Church, my name is Harash Biglarin. I hope you've all had a wonderful time this year celebrating Christmas with your families. And today we want to talk about the significance of Christmas and some details that we might have not considered before. Christmas is a time to celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ. And many of us have heard that Jesus Christ was actually born in a manger. This might be shocking to hear if it was any other king. But if you know the character of Jesus Christ, you'll know that this is actually quite fitting. You see, Jesus Christ claimed to be the bread of life. And he came for his sheep. He is the bread that gives nutrition to his people. And let us praise the Father for sending his one and only Son to be nutrition for our souls. That whoever eats from this bread will have everlasting life. Just to reiterate, Jesus Christ was not born into a family of wealth, power, or prestige. But he was born into a family where faith was found. And the faith that was found was in the promised seed of the Lord. And this faith was transferred from generation to generation until it reached Joseph and Mary. And this faith regarded that a Savior was going to be born one day that would overcome the sin of the world and would establish His kingdom on earth. To illustrate this point, let us first turn our Bibles to Genesis chapter 3 and read verse 15. And I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and hers. He will crush your head and you will strike his heel. When we read this verse, we see that even though Adam and Eve rebelled against God and disobeyed him, God had a plan to send a savior one day to crush the head of Satan who had deceived Adam and Eve and caused them to fall under oppression. And we also hear of a very similar promise that God makes to Abraham in Genesis 22 verse 18, which reads, and through your offspring, all nations on earth will be blessed because you have obeyed me. This seed or promise that we keep hearing about in Genesis is none other than Jesus Christ. And if you read the genealogy of Jesus Christ, you will see that he comes from a line of people who believed or had faith in God's word. You see, the nature of God has not changed. He continues to search for people who will receive him by faith. That is to say, they'll trust in His Word, such that He could have a relationship with Him through His Son, Jesus Christ. And we can see this very nature ingrained within us, because we're created in the image of God. I don't know anyone that will uh, establish a relationship based upon faithlessness. That is, the, there is no trust or any goodwill. Any relationship that is not based upon good faith will inevitably crumble. And notice how I said, on good faith and not blind faith. You see, not all faith is actually good. Good faith is whenever we see a person's character, when they prove themselves to be reliable or faithful. And when you see that someone is actually faithful, you begin to have faith in them. Such that when tomorrow they say, I'm going to do such and such thing for you, you have faith in their words because they've proven themselves to be a, a person of character. Now the Lord is seeking for people that have faith in Him, such that He could establish a relationship with Him through His Son, Jesus Christ. Now Jesus Christ would have never been born into a family that did not have faith in the Word of God. And to prove this point, let us see how Mary and Joseph responded to the revelation that Mary was pregnant with the Messiah through the Holy Spirit. First, let's read Matthew chapter 1, verses 18 through 25. This is how the birth of Jesus, the Messiah, came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph. But before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law, and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, and the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because you will, he will save the people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord has said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which, mean God, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded and took Mary home as his wife. But he did not consummate their marriage until she had given birth 
to a son, and he gave him the name Jesus. You see, Joseph was a man who trusted in God, and he did not divorce his wife Mary. How would other men have reacted in this position? Imagine confronting your wife, seeing that she's pregnant, and she begins to tell you that, oh, she conceived this through the Holy Spirit, and that she bears the Messiah or the Savior of the world. I doubt many men would be as kind to Mary as he was, to privately want to divorce her, such that her life was not put into danger, or the babies. But whenever the Lord spoke to him and confirmed that the child that is in Mary is actually the Savior of the world, and that he has a large uh, part to play in, in Jesus Christ's life, he accepted this role, and he trusted in the Lord. And we can see that having a man of faith in Jesus Christ's life, early in his life especially, was critical. Because Joseph did not divorce Mary. When the Lord spoke to him and told him to go to Egypt, he obeyed. When the Lord spoke to him and told him to come out of Egypt and go into Nazareth, he also obeyed. You see, if Joseph wasn't a man of faith, none of these things would have happened. You see, Joseph being a man of faith was critical, especially in the early stages of Jesus Christ's life. If he wasn't a man of faith, would he have stayed with Mary? Would he have left to Egypt when Jesus Christ's life was in danger? And would he have ultimately returned back to Israel in Nazareth? Likewise, let us read and see how Mary responded when the Lord told her that she would conceive Jesus. Let us read Luke chapter 1, verses 26 through 38. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, to a town, Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a, to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings to you who are highly favored to the Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at this word and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father, David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will, be, will never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come on you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. And she who was said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month. For no word from God will ever fail. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word be fulfilled. The angel left. Uh, the angel left her. Now the most important thing to take away from reading these passages is that Mary responded by saying, May your word be fulfilled in my life. May we all react in the same manner when the Lord speaks to us or gives us a promise. So I hope we're not beginning to see that the Lord is seeking people like Joseph and Mary who trusted him such that he could send his son Jesus Christ to be in their lives. Joseph and Mary are great examples for us because they both came from a, a, a line of ancestors that trusted and had faith in the Lord. Let us also teach our children the word of God such that they are aware of all the promises and they may also receive all the promises that the Lord has prepared for them. You see, all the things that occurred to Mary and Joseph were actually prophesied much earlier in the Old Testament. God confirms and He actually does what He promises. The Lord proves to us that He is reliable so that we may also respond in the same manner that Joseph and Mary did. So I hope we're now beginning to understand that faith is a prerequisite for the Father to send His Son, Jesus Christ, into a family. And God wants to send His Son also into our families today. And He wants us to receive and have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ as well. The Kingdom of God operates on faith. None of us are saved besides by faith. It is by faith in Jesus Christ alone that we are saved. That is to say, we trust in Him completely. We surrender our lives to Him, and that we listen to His Word, and we follow His Word. That is what it means to have faith in Him. 
That means that we give ourselves entirely to Him and we believe His words. Who else or what else shall we put our faith in more than Jesus Christ? Has there ever been a man who's lived on earth quite like Him? What did Jesus Christ do during His time on earth? He made disciples of men. He taught daily in the synagogues and in the, in the streets. He gave sight to the blind. He healed the brokenhearted. He raised the dead. He healed the sick. And he prophesied of his own death and resurrection. There has been no one else like Jesus Christ on earth. And when we read a few verses from Isaiah chapter 53, we get a better understanding of who Jesus Christ was and why he was sent to us. It says, He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was put upon him. And with his stripes we are healed. Praise to our Lord Jesus Christ. He is the Savior of the world. He is a blessing to all nations. And He desires to be in each one of your families today. All that requires us is to have faith in Him, in His Word. And when we receive Him and says, Lord, let your will be done in my life as Mary did, then Jesus Christ will come into our life. He will establish a relationship with us. If you do not know Jesus Christ today, do not delay any longer. Accept Him as your Lord and Savior. Put your complete trust in Him and say, Lord, from this day forward, I want you in my life. And I want to know you. And I will serve you day and night. And if you know Jesus Christ, you are born again. That every single day uh, cause us to have a deeper, a greater bond with Him. A, a better relationship with Him. Let our relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ grow continually. God bless each and every one of you. And I'd like to finish today's message with a short prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we glorify you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for sending your Son to us, Jesus Christ, to die upon the cross. By his blood, we are saved, Lord Jesus. We glorify you, our King. We thank you for being faithful, for showing yourself to us, by speaking to us, Lord, by giving your word to us, by sending your servants and ultimately your son for us. Father, I pray for those who have heard this message today, that in their lives and in their families, Lord, your son comes, and that there may be a breakthrough in their lives. Especially today, my God, we need you. Because we are surrounded by fears, Lord. We're surrounded by rumors of wars and actual wars, my God. We're surrounded by uh, anxiety and the fear that we may lose all things and we may lose our lives to even viruses, Lord. We pray that your peace comes upon us and they may experience your love, Lord, your power, Father. I bless each and every one that has heard your word today, my God, and has received it by faith. And I pray that you may deal with them individually, my God. And that you may show them, Lord, that you are sovereign, that you are king at all times, my God. You raised Jesus Christ from the dead, and I'm sure you could rescue us from any situation. Give your children peace, Lord, that the world does not know, my God. Remind each and every one of them, Father, that you are in complete control over their lives. We glorify you and we praise your mighty name. Amen.